forehead. That is fucking fire. Welcome to Paris, 47. The show is just about to start. The show is just about to start, yeah. You're just in time for a chat, it's never taught it. I know it's rare to see we taking losses hardly. We back together, now it's hard for us to part, yeah. It's time to part. The show is just about to start, yeah. You're just in time for a chat, it's never taught it. I know it's rare to see we taking losses hardly. We back together, now it's hard for us to part, yeah. Season, and the guest list is a veritable who's who of the global fashion elite. Yeah, that's me, baby, we dripping hard. Move so quietly when I leave, they gon' give me 50 stars. No one in my league, no one other even hit the bar. They gon' get depressed, trying their best, people finna hit the bar. Community goaded, when we leech, we leave an empty car. Yes. Pull, put you in the scope, we eliminate any target. Always in go, going for the gold, shit really isn't far. Fetched. Only got three days, but we coming back like it's been a year to party. Can I get some nodders in chat? You will find Victor Novikov basking in the spotlight, while Dalia Margolis hosts the heavily guarded auction on the second floor for a group of Iago's top customers. Spending large amounts, getting hard to count, and a pile up to a mountain. Auctioneer was astounded, the vault looking like a fountain, the vault looking hella crowded. It's no clown. The show is just a yeah. last start, yeah. You're just in time for a chat, is never taught it. It's rare to see we taking losses hardly. We back together now, it's hard for us to part, yeah. It's time to part. The show is just a lot of star, yeah. You're just in time for a chat, is never taught it. I know it's rare to see we taking losses hardly. We back together now, it's hard for us to part, yeah. It's time to part, yeah. Now, event security will keep a watchful eye on any suspicious activity. Yeah. But I trust your timeless look shall fit right in. Yeah, appearance is time was so true. Dripping so hard on the fountain of youth. Wouldn't expect it, I pull every sleuth. Yeah, red nose, red dot, we gon' shoot. We shoot to kill you, some big shoes to fill you, some big shoes for real. Swing through the hills, do some huge movement skills. Bitch, I improve, I'll stay the show is just a lot of star, yeah. You're just in time for a chat, is never taught it. I know it's rare to see we taking losses hardly. We back together, now it's hard for us to part, yeah. It's time to part, The show is just a lot of star, yeah. You're just in time for a chat, is never taught it. It's rare to see we taking losses hardly. We back together now, it's hard for us to part, yeah. It's time to party, yeah. What up? <laughs> yo, 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 yo. Big day. Big day today. Good to see you all. What's up? What's good? What's popping? What's bracken? Uh, NW Player, Sleepy, Dreepy, Wamba, John. A lot of rhyming names today. Carlini, Garpad. What's good? What's popping? I got to get as much mileage out of that intro as I can. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I bought it when I was banned and, you know, with forehead out of the business, I got to reuse all my songs. We had a big day today, though not a long day. We're here for a good time, not a long time. I got a date night tonight with Ari. I got a date night tonight. But I'm very excited to show you uh, the Hitman stuff today. Mopkins, thank you for the three months. Hemi, semi, colon, thank you for the two months. Jerbs with the 13 months. Hexa, DCM, thank you for the prime. Hold my do-rag with the prime. Ba -ba 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 
Little Dick Gang, thank you for the five. That's what a username. Big Dish Up with a 14. Thank you. Marquee, thank you for the six. Jackson, thank you for the two months. Seven split with the prime. Fear My Wiener with the two. I also have a date, so thanks, Big A, for thinking of me, too. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, man, I was, that's what I was. I just didn't want our dates to get in the way of the stream content. Um, it's already 8 where I'm at. You don't understand time zones. What do you mean I don't understand time zones? <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah, I do understand time zones. I went live during my time zone. I'm not planning around your time zone. Uh, <laughs> damn, you know these hitmen are the world's best when they break the game before the content begins. No, they're, <laughs> they already... <laughs> you'll get it later. You'll get it later. Um, HROC owns Western Time confirmed. People have said that. I'm wearing my uh, trademark Hitman hoodie today because today is a big Hitman day. It's one of those exciting pieces of hitman content i think we've had in a minute since the world record grinds um i was really excited about this idea and it came together really well so uh what's it? it's the duck from hitman his explosive rubber ducky why is there no hit woman that's powerful there is actually in the more of the game there is a hit woman but she's remarkably easy to kill doesn't seem very balanced a little sexist, IOI. Possible sexism. <laughs> Is she bald? <laughs> IOI should be brave enough to have a bald hit woman. I'm saying it. I'm saying it right now. They they didn't. Um so brave. <laughs> yeah, I'm <just> thinking. <laughs> a bald female clown. Uh, Iowa is anti bald. I think <laughs> if any game company in the world is not anti bald, it's Iowa. Their lead character is bald. He's the most famous bald character. Um, Hitman 4 is going to be an all female remake. I hope you're doing well today. I am doing well today. Uh, I've got a date night tonight. I've got some fun stuff I just knocked out earlier. That'll be good for future streams. And uh, Factor renewed. My Factor sponsorship. So I'm excited about that. Um, anyway, I'm going to explain. So we'll start in about... We'll start in like 5, 10. I want to shoot the shit for a bit. Vibe, see how you guys are doing. Why did you come in the chat and say Dominic Toretto question mark? What, <laughs> what prompted that? Not bald, he has clown hair. I think it's a wig. Oh, bald character. Well, I was talking about in video games. I was talking about in video games. Dominic Toretto, <laughs> first of all, he's, not, he's more than a character, okay? He's basically real. He's basically family to all of us. Why don't I see your latest vids on YouTube? Oh, I don't know, subscribe. <laughs> I don't fucking know. What's your algo like? <laughs> Um, you're very welcome. Me buying factor is the reason they renewed. Thank you. R dubs. That's what they said. Specifically. They said we weren't going to renew your, your contract. You're a terrible pitch man, but with R dubs on the line, <laughs> we can't afford not to Dr. Eggman. Maybe Robotnik. Maybe he is pretty bald. 47 is hairless though. You know what I'm saying? There's a difference. 47 really has no fucking hair, no stash, clean cut. Lex Luthor's not a video game character. Kirby? <laughs> okay, fine. If you count Kirby, then he is a more famous bald character. I don't personally count Kirby. Also, Kirby can't have hair. Johnny Sins is not a video game character. 
The Rock is not a video game character. Goombas. <laughs> 47 has pubes. That's, first of all, unproven. Second of all, crass. Third of all, not relevant. Kirby can get hair if he absorbs a haired person. He chooses not to. Sigma. <laughs> Why are we talking about Kirby so much? Today is fucking about Agent 47 and a big Hitman day. This is not compliment Kirby day. My favorite bald video game character is Atriox. That's a fucking layup, Quack. You've been here long enough to know that you're just fucking... You're just, That's a fucking... That is that is bowling with fucking um, bumpers up. Lazy. Lazy. Lazy joke is what it is. You've been here too long to tap it in. <laughs> no, you need something funnier than that, bro. That is bumpers up bowling. Um, <laughs> drop a Ludwig short, too, while you're here. <laughs> Dumb fucker. <laughs> Pac-Man is bald. Okay, you guys are picking a lot of characters that are like... We have no idea whether or not they can grow hair. So it's not fair. It's not a, it's not bald if they could grow hair. I mean, it's if they couldn't. If, if their species does not have hair, then they're not bald. Did, <laughs> is Mega Man bald? I don't know. I don't know, but if you said, what is your favorite bald video game character? And someone said Mega Man, you'd have questions, right? It wouldn't, it wouldn't be immediately apparent that you were correct. With Agent 47, it is immediately apparent. The Rock from Fortnite. He's not, okay, yes, but he's not originally from Fortnite. Ooh, someone said Kratos and I might have just lost. Fuck! Fuck! All right, Kratos might actually just win. That's not fair. Uh, <laughs> Kratos might actually win. It's a bigger series than Hitman. Edge is out. Blade of 47 is up there, is the point. The point is he's up there. He's very high on the list. <laughs> okay, stop listing bald characters. <laughs> you know what? I wasn't too tied to this. It was sort of an offhanded line that I threw out. Asia 47, he's one of the best bald characters. And you guys have really taken it to its logical extreme, to its conclusion. You are listing every bald thing you can think of, and it doesn't, there's no, <laughs> there's no point to this. There's no, <laughs> uh, inscription today, no shot, zero shot of playing scripts today. Would rather chop my leg off than play scripts today because I don't have time. I have a fucking date night. Inscription tomorrow, maybe. Um... <laughs> uh, okay We will Let's see 501 I'm going to give it five minutes And then I'm going to jump in Because I want to make sure We have time to do this full thing There is going to be Well I'll explain it I'll explain it in a second I'll explain what you guys are doing How's everybody doing? How's your weekend going so far? It's Saturday You know the vibes How is Saturday? How's your weekend? Are you dreading Monday already? Yes, no, maybe Love the VODs this week Nice Thank you. Stressed as fuck. Well, good thing you're watching Twitch streams. <laughs> no better way to distract yourself from your stress than by watching Twitch streams. Um, did absolutely nothing so far. And... <laughs> Wait, that's right. Coats. Hey, this whole thing was awesome. Appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, big shout out to Coats. I'm going to shout out everybody uh, when we get to it in a second. But um, thank you, Coats. Appreciate that. Working on a new project. What new project? Secret project information? Easy clap. Don't have to worry about Monday if you're unemployed and don't go to school. <laughs> Fucking king shit, dude. You're right. You're actually so right. Actually easily clapped. Bro, that's how I feel when I talk to fucking Stans. Stans works. I mean, he streams every day consistently. But Stans lives the dream life right now. Stans is 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 just fucking living the dream. 
He like gets regular outdoor time. He works out. He streams when he wants to. Makes me pissed off, dude. Fucking stands. Um, stands stinky. Thanks, man. I needed that. I needed to knock him down. How long till Hitman? Probably five minutes. We'll get started. Um, maybe you should learn something from him. Nope, I won't. <laughs> I'm greedy. I want as much money as I can. I like. <laughs> I like work. <laughs> Any chance at a Sark getting sad Sunday? No, obviously not. <laughs> I wonder if you guys are being serious. People come in literally every day of the week and ask for a X arcading X Unday, whatever the fucking day is. <laughs> and it's like, no, I, I barely do it on fucking Monday. I'm not going to do a bonus one. I'm not doing a Tharketing Thursday just because. <laughs> no, of course not. Volunteered and can't feel my legs after eight hours of free labor. Why? Was it a good cause? Or was it like one of those TikToks? <laughs> or it's like the best way to get a job is to show up to an employer and tell them you'll work eight hours for free. What? <laughs> what? Grave robbing? <laughs> grave robbing. Wow, that is... I volunteered down at the local graveyard to rob all of the graves. How much... I wonder how profitable a venture grave robbing really is. It can't be. It can't be that profitable. I feel like most coffins are... There's not a lot of value inside. People aren't buried with their values. High risk reward? No, I think it's... I think it's high risk, sure. I think it's low reward. <laughs> not anymore back in the day it was. How far back in the day? I mean, like Egyptian pharaohs, sure. That's a profitable grave rob. I think ever I think you, if you were to plot it on a graph, grave robbing has gone down in profitability since the pharaohs. If you work in a morgue, you get to steal all the corpses' jewelry on the organs. <laughs> People, what does that mean? <laughs> I'm gonna put all my money into grave rob grave robbing. <laughs> Just buy a shovel, bro. <laughs> it's. <laughs> It's not a capital intensive business. You don't have to build a factory to get into grave robbing. You buy a shovel, one shovel, and you're ready to go. You've got your entire equipment you need. <laughs> mm, I guess if you had a real like fucking, if you knew where the rich people were buried, even still, I, I can't imagine they would be buried with like a lot of jewelry or shit. I have a great work ethic and I'm grinding and succeeding, but I'm getting depressed and starting to reconsider a lot of stuff about life. You really jumped into our grave robbing discussion with a, <laughs> with a fucking gut punch, huh? A real right hook. <laughs> Not even a sub, bro. That's like a fucking first message in here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, making sure your quality of life is, uh, is important. Your happiness prioritized. Um, cause you can, you can overgrind something that I have trying to learn myself. I think I've overgrinded some things. Grave robbing has good benefits. It doesn't, it doesn't. You guys, it's not a question. I'm not having a question and answer session on grave robbing. I think you guys misconstrued that when I bring up the topic like that, <laughs> I'm not trying to have like a debate on the pros and cons of grave. I already know I'm, I'm factually aware. It's a bad idea. <laughs> it's high risk, low reward. It doesn't have great dental. <laughs> Are you stealing the teeth? Are you pulling the teeth out of the, the fucking corpses? That's not great dental. Feels more subjective than you believe. I don't no, I disagree. Grave robbing is a dying industry. <laughs> That's grave robbing humor. <laughs> At grave robbing conventions, you both... <laughs> you hey, we're in a dying industry, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's good. Wait, that actually makes me want to do it. Fuck it. You've convinced me. Gallows humor, you know? That you'd be able to, it's to die for. <laughs> yeah, that's good. 
Millennials killed the grave robbing industry. Yeah, we can't afford coffins, bro. Um, people are dying to get into this graveyard. Lol W. Okay, don't lol W your own fucking joke. <laughs> just the worst version of the joke we just made. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I want to talk because I've never laughed at my <laughs> my own jokes, never, ever, 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 and I don't appreciate when other people do it. Uh, <laughs> um. Anyway, good to see you all. All right, today's a big day. Let's talk about it. Let's get to it. I actually don't have a lot of time. Ahem. One week ago, one week ago, a mysterious video appeared on the dark web where people hire hitmen. Now, this video was deleted almost as soon as it came up, but I was able to download a copy. What you may see here may shock you. A mysterious unnamed content creator put out a bounty of 500 US dollars to the world's best hitman to kill five of his own Italian chatters. kill all five targets the fastest would get the $500. Wait, you guys can't hear me? <laughs> Wait, was there music? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wait, I don't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Let me see if you guys are on. Oh, it is really loud. <laughs> okay, we gotta take it from the top. We gotta take it from the top, but <laughs> yeah. uh, I forgot that I I forgot that it was loud, so I muted the audio output to my ears, and then I thought there was no audio. Don't worry, we got this. We got this. Let me just uh, like one quick change. Here. Just turn this down. Okay, right here. Let's see if we got this. Okay. So what did I say again? There was the dark web and. <laughs> all right. We need some monkas again. Okay. All right. Get ready. All right. All right. All right. All right. Back to it. Back to it. Back to it. Back to it. You know what? It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter because this take won't even be in the video because I'm getting the voice of Diana to record the intro. <laughs> Just spam monkeys, all right? All right. So a video appeared on the dark web. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. It was a contract kill. $500 bounty from an unnamed content creator, content creator <laughs> to kill five of his cringiest chatters for crimes such as backseating and being super cringe. <laughs> All of them were scattered around various parts of Italy, ranging from the main square to the church to even the lab below the mansion. There was only one catch to this contract. The money would only go to the hit man or woman who could kill them all the fastest. And the time limit, only five days from when it was created. With that in mind, a journey began where the greatest hitmen in the world all descended on Sapienza, Italy 
to showcase their skills. <laughs> uh, I put this up five days ago. Let me walk you through a little bit of what we did. Um, switch scenes. Switch scenes. So this is the contract. Now look at this. This is the most played contracts. For the, for the entirety of uh, the duration, this was trending number one. This is the most played contract in the entire Hitman uh, ecosystem during during the past week. And a lot of people submitted their own attempts. Five different targets. Now again, uh, if you are new to Hitman, every mission in the main story has between two and four targets. There are, no, I'm sorry, there is one with five. There is one with five. <laughs> But in general, almost every mission is two to four. Uh, and Sapienza, the main this, the mission this is based off of, has only two. So this is a five-target mission. The max you can have to be... Uh, it was designed to be as difficult as possible. Let me explain it to you so you can see what's going on. When you design a contract in the role of Hitman, you can create your entire... Again, it's something... That we created. This is the first time it's been published. Uh, we wanted to look at this gigantic map of Sapienza with multiple different locations and pick targets that were very, very far apart to make it very difficult to find out, you know, what the best place to start was and the best route to take was to give the optimal room for creativity from all the runners. So when I designed it with Coates, uh, the expert contract creator in chat right now, shout out to Coates, at Coates. We wanted to pick um, con uh, contract targets that were extremely far apart. So you'll see, the first target we picked is all the way over here in the top right corner of the map. Right here, kneeling down, helping this biker out. <laughs> this guy right here, target number one. And then all the way, <laughs> all the way, 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 over here, inside the church, through here, up the stairs, through this curtain, and out here, this guy is target number two. Literally on the other side of the map. Walking between these two targets alone can take 90 seconds. It can take over a minute just to walk. I mean, to walk, it's even longer, but to, to, to run. So so just that alone makes this an extremely difficult contract. But there's three more targets. Up on the roof here, there is a guard of Francesca. This is the actual target in the main game, but she's not a target here. This guy will follow her around through her whole route uh, in the game. So this is, a, this is the third target. The fourth target, in this public backyard area right here by the pool. He patrols around the pool. The fourth target. And the fifth and final target, just to make it extra fucking hard, <laughs> is down here in the lab. Surrounded by armed guards, it's this guy. With cameras to the left, cameras to the right, patrolling guards, patrolling scientists. There are five targets in five wildly different locations across the map. <laughs> Very difficult to get to. We designed this one to be difficult. Because with a $500 prize, which is the biggest cash prize in Hitman contract history, as far as I can tell, um, we knew we were going to bring out the best of the best. We wanted to make it difficult. So, I am going to show you. Now, dozens and dozens of runs were submitted. And all of them were amazing. And I want to give a big shout out to all of the great speedrunners who took a shot at this contract and did creative things. But I'm going to show you 10 runs today that showcase the different levels of evolution in just one week that speeders were able to make on this contract. It's absolutely insane what they were able, able to accomplish. I'm going to show you 10 runs, okay? Um, let me pull open my thing here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And again, not everybody that submitted is going to get shown. I, I would love to show more, but just to make it concise, we're going to show 10. 10 brilliant runs. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so, 
Is it the 10 fastest? No, 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 no. It's it's like a it's like a story almost like a 10 of what is it SASO? No, it's it's just Silent Assassin. Uh any disguise is allowed, but you have to get out with five stars. No one can see your kills. It has to be a it has to be a accident kills or a hidden body. So it's the 10. Um it's just it's a silent assassin. It's a required silent assassin. Okay. Now let's show this. So before we oh but before we jump into the runs, let me give you a breakdown of sort of what this looks like from a bird's eye view, okay? This is the map, uh, Sapiens that we're looking at. And these are the five targets we just talked about. One's here in the lab, one's here on the roof, one's here by the entrance, one's behind the building, and one's way over here. This one extra difficult over in the church. This guy was specifically picked to be extra hard because he's like, completely out of the way of the rest and hidden in the church. Okay? Um, now, what's interesting is this is a completely no rules contract. It was completely open season. As long as you get out Silent Assassin, your time counts. And we allowed any start point. So these right here are the 10 different start point locations. You can start at any one of these which means the opportunities for choosing your own route and developing your own route are limitless. Also, the rule was every submission was completely blind, which means if you're a speedrunner working on an idea where you start here, for example, and you submit it to me, nobody sees your run. Everyone is working independently. So you can't be like, I saw his run and I'm going to steal it and make it a little bit better. Everything is at their own creativity. So all of the runs were developed blind and it'll be revealed now. Speedrunners who competed in this competition are seeing the winning run today. They haven't seen it before. So it really, it's about completely developing your own stride on your own, and it's it's actually super sick. So these are the 10 start points. Now, we got a lot of submissions coming at this from all angles. People tackled this problem of killing these five targets in a variety of ways. I'm only going to be able to show you 10, so I'm going to start to begin with um, with one of the first good ones that we got. One of the first, like, um, serious runs. And now, when I did this run on my own, when Coates and I were creating the contract, I did it myself just to test it out. I got about a four minute. It took me about four minutes to get all around the map, silent assassin, kill all five, and get out. Four minutes, solid run. I'm going to show you the first submission that was about four minutes, okay? Just to give you an idea. I want to give this guy credit. This guy's name is Breeze. And he chose to start. He chose to start right here. At the guard spot. You start on the roof as a guard next to one of your targets. Okay? Pretty good spot. Pretty good spot to start. Let's show you Breeze's run. Okay. This is one of the first good runs. Um, top left. This is Breeze's run. You can hear it all right. Can you hear it? Sounds okay? You guys can't hear it? Let me make sure. Let me. No sound. Um, max volume. Hold up, hold up. I'm going to put a gain on. Okay. You guys can hear it? You got it? Sound? Okay, so one of the first um, ways that speedrunners began to break this level. Now, again, we got a lot. Of, we got a lot of submissions that were slower than four minutes, but they take a long time to show. So I'm not going to show them right now. There was a great gardener start by a guy named Super Noob who took about six minutes. Great early run, but this four minutes one is the first one that I think is like qualifies as like this is pretty good. Okay, so the first break was that if you start as a guard right here, you can walk up and poison this guy. In the back, instant lethal kill. That's one target down in six seconds. <laughs> That's a six second kill. Insane, already a good find. Already a good find that makes this run start to build up. Okay. Then he runs downstairs. The problem is the guard start is kind of uh, inconveniently placed. You start on a rooftop in a mansion. As we, as we said, there's the show. You're starting on this rooftop. 
right here in the mansion. And to get down, to get down to these other targets is a lot of effort. Everyone is way far away from you. So you get this guy quickly, but the rest are hard. Let's see how Breeze handles that. Um... How is the body not found? Lethal poison is an accident kill. Uh, if you kill them with lethal poison with a syringe and they don't see you do it, um, they can find the body and it's no problem. Still silent assassin. So he's dressed as a guard, so he gets he has free reign. He's in a guard disguise, which is a huge benefit. And he walks down here to kill this guy. He shoots the edge of the cliff, destroys this camera, and then when this guy walks up to the cliff to investigate, That's a little pushy pushy. <laughs> Boom! Accident kill. Two down. Two down. What the hell is that? Distracts this guy with a bullet. Sneaks through the building. Picks up the key card. Again, every round has to figure out how you're going to get through doors, how you're going to get downstairs, upstairs. The key card gets him into the lab where one of the targets is. Boom. Key card into the lab. You can hear the, yeah, the sweaty keyboard sound. <laughs> Shoots right here at this precise spot. Very clever. Causing this target to walk underneath a stalactite. Or might. I forget which one it is. <laughs> Falls on his head. Accident kill. Kills him. Stalactite kill. Very clever. Very, very clever. It's tight. Okay, stalactite. That's three down. Under two minutes. Shit. Shoots that. Come These in. guys can look at him because he's in a guard disguise, around. but the guy looked away. That, uh, he's distracted. Couldn't. Walks through the garage. Now he's back out front of the mansion with two targets left. Walks over here. This is the biker guy. Tosses a coin into the tall grass. If a body dies in the tall grass, it's hidden. This guy sneaks over the tall grass. Pops him in the head. Nobody sees the body. That's four down. Pretty good pace. Pretty good pace so far. But now, this is where he loses a lot of time. This fifth guy, the church guy, was the bane of many of the slow runs I saw. Finding a way to kill the guy that was in the church was very difficult to do quickly. So he has to walk, again, from the beginning of the map all the way across the map. Look how long this takes. Just hauling ass through the whole city of Sapienza to get to this church. In the front door. To the back of the church, dodging this guard. Upstairs. Around the corner. Through the gate. Pop him in the head. <laughs> and then out the back. So all five are down. And he gets out around four minutes with the harbor exit. Again, impressive. This is one of the first runs that was about the time that I got. Around four minutes. Okay? A really solidly executed run. It had a good plan for each kill. And most of the time loss came from having to run between them. Again, yeah, there's a full minute of running to the church. There's a lot of running between the buildings. That's where a lot of the time loss came. But all of his kills were very clean. And this is a good run. Again, a lot of uh, the main missions in the game take about two to four minutes. And they have fewer targets than this. Five targets, four minutes. That's, a great, that's great. Less than a minute a kill. All right? He gets out of the boat. So that was one of the first good runs I saw. But very quickly, some uh, massive improvements started to be made over the course of the week. So one of the next great ideas came from a runner named Colop315. Colop315 decided not to start, not to start um, here as a guard, but rather start down here in the lab 
where he could kill this guy, Marcelo Colombo, very quickly. And then sort of work his way up vertically. Start low and then work his way up. So he shaved off some time by starting there. So let's show off Kolop's strategy right now. So it's Kolop starting from the lab. Again, let me know if this sounds all right. <laughs> so he starts from the lab. It's a little loud. I can actually fix this. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're fixing it. We're fixing it. There we go. Starts in the lab. Immediately runs out. Grabs a stashed item. He has to kill this guy over here. He destroys the cameras early. Early destruction of the cameras so we can get past all the uh, all the cameras later. Time saver. Throws down a proximity taser. Check it out. Wait. <laughs> Wait. I don't know what he just did there. <laughs> I think he just tases the guard to death. Oh, in the water. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tosses a proximity taser. Now the guy shocks to death. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, I forgot to just kill guards. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so that first guard's dead. Yeah, yeah, first guard's dead. Tager's kill guards. Yeah, yeah. So that's one down instantly, and he's moving. He's moving quickly. One guard down, and he's in the mansion. All the way up from the bottom of the map to the top. He's on the roof now. Very quickly, within the first minute. Tosses another taser off the roof. Now, again, if a guard picks up a taser and uh, you activate it, it kills him. It, it shocks him to death. So, just to pause. That taser he randomly threw off the roof there, one of the targets will walk over, pick it up, and then you can activate it later and kill them at any time. He threw it in the right spot for them to, like, hit it on their patrol path. Then, right as this guard is entering this room, he arrives. His route is timed, so he gets here right as this guard is entering the room. And he throws a propane tank that distracts him. See what did that. The guard goes to investigate. <laughs> Boom! Ta uh, propane explosion is an accident kill. The body can be found. It's totally fine. Propane, accident kill, death on the third dive. This is my contract, yeah. You can see right there, he took out his uh, uh, the trigger, activated the taser. Killed this guy. So that's three targets dead in the first 150. Extremely, this is, a, this is like a clockwork machine. Everything's quick. Now, he's timed it. So at this moment, the church guy has left the church as part of his route and is outside. The church guy is, he stays in the top floor of the church and then he walks a little bit in the backyard and then goes back up. So he's timed it. So right as he gets here, this guy's outside, and there's a lawnmower within his cone of hearing. He shoots the lawnmower gas tank, causing this guy to go investigate. Boom! Blows that up. Accident kill. Very clean. And again, what's amazing about a route like this is like everything is timed around where his, where his targets are going to be, and he doesn't spend a lot of time waiting. You'll notice there's not a lot of time he's just waiting around for them to move. He gets there right when he needs to be, shoots, and moves on. It's a very clean, you know, that's the sign of a good route is, is like less waiting. <sighs> now he picks up that propane tank that he took up from the very, the basement. At the very beginning, he took that propane tank and he dropped it here. He's picking it up now that he needs it for the route. Runs through here. Almost got whooshed there. Almost got seen, but didn't. There was a dead rat under my phone. Uh, <laughs> now, he does lose a little time here because he has to walk all the way out of the mansion, all the way to the front. Again, the hardest part of this contract is how far apart every target is. Caruso, you know where it is. Big mansion up in Tapienza, 
just drops a propane tank? <laughs> Again, the theme of this run is people like <laughs> investigating things they shouldn't. Salactites, <laughs> propane tanks. Anyway, he drops propane tank right out of range. This is perfectly ranged. So this explosion radius won't hit the guy on the ground. It will only hit him. Pulls out a sniper. Boom. <laughs> By the way, cool guys don't look at explosions. This is a badass final kill. <laughs> that was a badass kill. And then, look. He ends his route right next to this boggy, which is an exit. I mean, everything is spaced, so he has his final kill immediately next to an exit, which is a very smart idea of a good route. And so he can just instantly get in the car, drive away, 305. A full minute faster than the last run, and a full minute faster than what I did in my run. So 305 already. And, and again, we're at 2 of 10 that I'm talking through. Sick, clean, well-routed run. Very impressive. But, but we've got some more. <laughs> With $500 on the line, this was not the end. So, next up, I want to show someone who showed a little respect to the clown. This comes from Soviet Dubov, who called himself the Sniper Clown. And he, he was the first mm, to start. Again, he switched up the start again as well. So instead of starting from the lab or from the guard... He actually did a crazy thing and started all the way over here in the ruins. Now, the ruin start, right here, let me just make sure it's highlighted. This ruin start is pretty far from everybody. This start is like not near any of the targets. So there's, it's hard to see what the advantage is. But let's see how he uses it to his advantage. Mm. This is Soviet Dubov's sniper clown run. And this is one of the first runs that I'm going to show today where <laughs> the the no rules starts to really apply. Because we get this is, this is anything goes competition. Whatever way you can figure out in the game to kill these contracts, this guy starts doing some crazy stuff. Oh, quality's low? Let's see. If we, uh, 720 is all we got. 720 is all we got, unfortunately. It's grainy Hitman footage, all right? <laughs> so... He started in the ruins and smuggled in a sniper rifle. Then he goes to the top of the ruins. Now, the advantage of the ruins, just, I'm sorry, I, have to, I, have, I want you guys to understand this. The advantage of the ruins is that they have a very high vantage point right here to see a lot of the map. It's not near anything, but if you were going to do a sniper run, being right here is pretty, pretty powerful. So let's go back. Um... All right, right off the bat, shoots a, a seemingly random bullet to move a guard. Mm -hmm. The guards are all running to investigate. Now, that sniper bullet did not kill the target because they would have found the body. That sniper bullet knocked the target down while the rest of the guards were running downstairs. Just to specify, that target, that sniper bolt made the target fall to the ground, not dead, while the rest of the guards around him kept running downstairs. That's a little key thing. He shoots a bullet over here to distract that guy. A bullet over there to distract that guy. And look, as the biker guy goes to investigate, blam, <laughs> dead. And he's in a corner, no one sees his body. Bam! He's dead. Bam! He's dead. He made all of them walk to locations where they couldn't be seen. And then... Then it gets wild. 
this is and this is one of the things you might see from some of the later runs that's going to be insane. But in this game, you may have seen from some of my videos, you can use things like muffins or breakable objects to boost to areas you can't normally get to. This guy drops a violin. A violin and a breaching charge, which is the smallest little bomb. And then <laughs> blows himself up on the pieces of the violin to a higher location because he needs that extra height for some of these shots. Okay. This is a invisible wall that is the, the top of the, the tower that he's standing on. So now he's violent boosted to an invisible wall to get the height he needs to shoot the guy over in the church. But he has to wait for him to go outside. So he's doing a little... Waiting, waiting. And again, this church guy is still a real problem. This route requires him to wait right now because the guy doesn't come outside until 145, right? So boom. Right as he exits, pops him in the head. Clean shot. And he just jumps off the roof. <laughs> there is no fall damage in Hitman because you can't get up there. <laughs> and he uses this backwards uh, entrance over to the lab. Destroys the camera. Uh, walks into the lab. And fires some very well-placed shots. Okay. Make those guys look away. Make those guys look away. Make, that, make the guard turn around. Right as that guy looks away, make him turn around, and then dead. <laughs> Nobody sees the body, at least in time, for him to exit. And that is a full, a full 13 seconds faster than the run we just showed. Very sick run, very sniper based. So he used a start that was very far from everything else, but had a great sniper vantage point to be able to sort of reduce the running time um, with a little more waiting time. And it was suit only, all entirely in the clown suit. Very clever, good run by Subit Duvab. It's a 251. Not to be outdone though, it was quickly answered back with this from Zebulaus. And he started again in an entirely different location. Let me show you Zebulaus's uh, location. And that was also done during a controller. That was a controller run, which is pretty impressive. So, again, we've seen uh, the ruins start now, but instead of starting here, here, or here, he actually started in the safe house. Um, right here, the safe house. Boom, in the sort of the middle of the town square right here. Kind of closer to this guy. The closer to the morgue guy. Um, nice route to these guys. This guy becomes one of his hardest. The lab is a lot harder when you start over here. So every time you start somewhere closer to someone, someone else becomes a harder target. So he started the safe house. Let me show you Zebulas's run. A lot of loading time. <laughs> it doesn't count against them. All right, so he starts in the safe house and immediately pulls out his sniper and just shoots straight down the street 
to where the biker guy has started to pull him away. Triple shot. To panic him. Pulls out a breaching charge. He's dripped out. Fucking dressed to the nines. I've never even seen this. I've never used this. In I've played this level a thousand, two thousand times. I've never climbed up this balcony from the safe house entrance. I didn't even know about this prompt. I always go down. I've never gone up. So this is already clever. And it gets him up to this balcony where he panicked this guy who's running for his life because of the three sniper shots. And he happens to run right past this car. Boom! <laughs> A delayed car bomb. <laughs> Again, crazy clever and entirely different from previous runs. <clears throat> By the way, I kind of feel bad for that guy. He's just a guy who was trying to help a hurt biker. And then three sniper bullets appear around him. He ran for his life and then a car blew up and he died. <laughs> what a terrible day for a good Samaritan. All right. Then he busts into the kitchen. Uh, shoots this fucking chef in the leg so he falls down and doesn't see him. <laughs> Again, this chef did nothing wrong. Not a target. <laughs> and then... And then we see something that kind of... That really was a breakthrough. Now, he wasn't the first person to do this, but in the order of the runs I'm showing, uh, it's the first time you're going to see it. This was a massive breakthrough. At certain times... In the church guy's route, and we didn't, I didn't know this when we created the contract. He walks underneath the church bell. And if you shoot this rope to make it fall, you can crush him alive with the bell of the church he goes to. Boom! Church guy down in the first minute. Where's your god now? <laughs> okay. Then he gets on the roof and does a similar thing where he pulls this guy to the cliff. And then I think shoots him off of it. Yeah. Shoots him off the cliff. Shooting the door allowed? Yeah, 100%. Snipers can open doors. I'm gonna bring you down. Pops that guy. Literally pops this guard while the person he's supposed to guard is looking at this whiteboard <laughs> or this bulletin board. <laughs> she does not turn around even though you busted in the room and shot the guard in the head. Knocks her out with a fish. Style points. That way she doesn't find the body. Already four targets down, you'll notice, in the first two minutes. Crazy fast so far. Dripped out, suit only, four targets dead. Oh, missed a shot. All right, you just sniper to open the door. Enters the lab. Makes that guard look away. Grabs a coin off the floor. That's part of the map, just a coin lying there. Uses it to his advantage. Sniper shots are not mud shots. No, it's only for the pistol. And then throws uh, a breaching charge. A qu <laughs> so he put a remote detonated bomb next to a propane tank and then threw a coin next to that so the guy would go investigate. And then right as the guy gets near the bomb, he blows it up. And exits. Now, he could have just waited and shot the propane tank, but this makes it so he can be at the exit right as he kills him. Because once you explode someone and kill them, they might go find the, you know, they might turn around. So, instant exit. Instant exit. Boom. And that's a 249. 
even faster than Soviet Dubov's sniper strat. A 249. Again, from a different start. <laughs> but again, a two-second save. That's not enough. No, no, no. The next second, the next one saves more than 30 seconds off of this. With an entirely different start yet again. I'm going to show you Buzzy Bugs submission. Next up, oh wait. Uh, next up, we have Buzzy Bug. And he did not start in the safe house or the guard start or the lab start or the ruin start. He started down here in the morgue. Okay? Let me show you Buzzy Bug's morgue start. Uh, right here. And the morgue start is considered, I mean, listen, it's good because it's near the church guy, but it's particularly bad for speedrunners because in the morgue start, you start in a coffin and it takes like five seconds just to even get out of the coffin. You're already at a disadvantage. You don't start able to act quickly. You have to, you have to like wake up and get out of the coffin. <laughs> so he gets out of the coffin and pulls out an Uzi. Boom! And instantly... <laughs> without being whooshed, snipes the, the church guy with an Uzi from the first floor. Just blam. Just instantly. In nine seconds, the church guy, who has been very tough to kill for a lot of the early submitted runs, boom, dead with an Uzi. Hot start. Yeah, Godfather scene. Still silent assassin. Nobody saw that. He just evaded the whoosh. Everyone in there starts praying. <laughs> I'm sure that took him many attempts to get the angle right so he wouldn't get seen, but he did do it. Then, this was crazy. I have not... This is like probably the only run that was submitted that did this. There is a way to get from the main streets into the lab that I have only used maybe once playing casually. If you blow up this wall, this is a loose wall of rock. It's like a Zelda game. If you blow up this wall, you can literally walk through the through a secret tunnel. This is like you have to have an explosive right here. He throws an explosive baseball and it blows this wall out into a secret tunnel that he leads to the fucking basement. <laughs> Tosses a propane tank, instantly snipes it, accident kill. Panics that guard. Tango is lost. Move, find him. Expertly evades that guard. Uses the Uzi to open the door. Climbing the stairs to the top. Climbing this to the roof. Again, going from bottom to top. Kind of difficult. You have to get up. Uh, you have to gain a little height real quick. Yeets a taser. The guard back there is going to pick up that taser and die. That's a quick to offhanded toss. It's going to get him a free kill. Walks into here. What? Knocks out her with a crowbar and shoots him in the head. <laughs> and then... Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> like I said... Breakable objects have a lot of crazy utility. This is one of the first times you're going to see someone use a breakable object to boost off of a roof. He grabs the bust, the basically the statue, from her desk. Okay? As he's running through here and uses it to boost <laughs> uh, 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 off the roof. <laughs> oh Massive time save instead of having to go down the stairs. Kind of like a muffin. Man, I've at the Distracts those guards. Runs behind him. Makes that guy look away towards the sign. Distracts that guy. Shoots him in the head. And exits. 
A two... 12 or... 212. A 212. 30 seconds faster. <laughs> really clean run. Really clean run. But... <laughs> You may notice I said we had 10 runs. We are we are halfway through the runs I'm showing you today. <laughs> it gets faster. Insanely clean run. I mean the the rooftop boost, um the the killer start, the Uzi kill in the first two seconds. Insanely fast, but <laughs> it is not the fastest. For the next one, we have the first run. That broke two minutes of that I'm showing today in, in the order I'm showing it today by Atomic Garbage. And this one, similar to that clown sniper uh, one we showed before, goes back. Oh, no, 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 no wrong one. <laughs> this one, my friends, goes back to the ruins. Again, when, when we made this contract, I would have guessed that the ruins is the worst start. I would have guessed that Ruins is the single worst starting location of all of them because it is so far from every target. But these crazy sniper players proved me wrong. So a 147, because they reduce all running time because of the sniper. So uh, Atomic Garbage came in with a 147 from the Ruins. He also said a really nice message. He said, I'm not a speedrunner at heart, but I love your streams. So I took a more unconventional route, which I hope you'll find even more interesting. Uh, this run I worked really hard on. So let's show Atomic Garbage's insane sub two minute run from the ruins. So he starts at the back. Um, again, this this uh, start is so bad. It's so far from everything. But he uses the height to his advantage. And it makes a major difference. He runs all the way up here. Climbs up here. Look at all this. I mean, it just gets set up for... You're not even near any targets. And then pulls out his sniper. Makes the guards panic. Expertly plays shots. Makes his guy... Walk again, similar to the other sniper run. Uh, similarly, knocks him down. As far as I know, independently discovered. Because these runs were not public. So, independently also discovered that you can make all the guards run away and knock one down to kill him later. Kills this guy. Pops this guy. Pops the church bell. Major time save over the other sniper run. He had figured out the church bell kill. Pops that guy free. That's four targets dead in less than a minute with insanely crazy shots. And really smooth. Then pulls out magnesium powder, which is like a flashbang. And right before he gets whooshed, flashbangs this guard, just runs past him while he's blinded <laughs> to get the quickest route into the lab. Dum, 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 dum. Snipes the camera. And then I think he has pretty clean shots here. To knock out this guy. Camera there. Camera there. Shooting the camera has two effects. Not only does it make the camera disappear, but everyone around the destroyed camera looks at the destroyed camera. So on the left, everyone's looking at that destroyed camera. On the right, everyone's looking at that destroyed camera. And right in the middle is his target. <laughs> Blam! Dead. And he's out with a 147. The first time we've seen a sub two minute today. So again, from the four minute start that I sort of uh, emphasized, this guy 
And, and no violin boost. No violin boost, no boost to the top. I mean, literally just clean shots, clean angles for a sub two minute. Atomic Garbage, excellent run. Thanks for enjoying my streams. Appreciate that. And Killer, Killer Submission. <laughs> but now, now I want to show you my final four. Now, these are not exactly the four fastest. A lot of different ones came in. But this is sort of the four that I'm going to explain that sort of were the big leaps. The big leaps. The big leaps. And I, why are we talking about big leaps? We've already seen massive two-minute cutoff. But, but this is where it gets absolutely mind-blowing. So, the next run is the single fastest run submitted that had no um, boosts. No breakable objects. No violin. No, no muffin. No bust. This is the fastest run submitted. And it got a insane 125. <laughs> As fast as Atomic Garbage just run, run just was, he shaved 20 seconds off that with no boost. This comes from Hatch, one of the greatest old school runners, a guy who's been running Hitman forever, um, and again, has a sort of, a, I guess, I heard he has a moral code or something around boost. He doesn't use them, even though it's an anything goes tournament. So Hatch came in with a phenomenal 125, and he, again, this is where we go back, um to that guard start. For these next runs, it for the really elite runners, they started to figure out that this guard start, the very first one we showed, this was the four minute time. This guard start was uniquely positioned to really be in the middle of all five, especially once you knew about the bell kill on this guy. So Hatch went back to the guard start and showed us this, a really a run that kind of blew me away when I saw it. Let me show it to you right now. So he starts as the guard on the roof. And again, the best advantage of this spot, even though it has many disadvantages, is you can um, you can poison the guard immediately. And that's one target down within the first like five seconds. So he gets up and doesn't do that. He doesn't immediately poison the guy next to him. He needs the time. He, his route is so meticulous that even the instant even the instant poison isn't optimal for what he needs to do. He runs downstairs. Shoots a pistol. Then poisons. He, has to, he literally times it so that while the guy is walking to that pistol shot he did, he gets the poison in. Instead of poisoning first, shooting, waiting for the walk, he gets them walking and poisons while he's doing it. Extremely optimal. I am on the huh. Was that an incident? Then walks back. Now they've walked to where he needs him to go, where they can hide the body. And hits a fucking moving shot. This target is running. <laughs> it's a it's a panicking running citizen. He gets a pistol headshot from the roof a mile away. It's actually a gorgeous shot. <laughs> it's really a gorgeous shot. I remember waking up and the hall. Runs downstairs. Uh -huh. He's in a guard outfit, so we can he can be seen with an open carry gun. Pops the camera. Pops the church bell from again, many yards away with the pistol. First try. Just instant, instant pops the rope holding up the church bell with a pistol while, like, while moving. Just, just clean. Pops that guy in the head. By the way, that guy's body will get found if you don't finish the level as fast as he does. He finishes it at 125, but if he wished it like in two minutes, that body would get found. He just kills him right there knowing the patrol won't find his body by the time he's going to get out. It's confidence. Tosses a rubber duck. Blows open that door with the rubber duck. 
that I'm wearing. Shout out to Rubber Duck. Distracts this guy with a pistol shot. Distracts. Leaps off. Perfectly placed. And he's out! I mean, how insane was that 125? Just pure clean. Barely any running time. Perfectly good pistol shots. Um, just a beautiful run by Hatch. Great submission. You can jump over there? Yeah, you can jump over there. Yep. That's a, that's a, that's a clean jump. Uh, thank you for hosting. It was a lot of fun. No problem. Thanks for submitting, Hatch. Really, really appreciate it. Really cracked run from Hatch. But <laughs> this is not the fastest run, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Even though we are now down to 125 from four minutes plus. <laughs> I have... I have three more runs to show you. <laughs> when you put $500 on the line, the fucking killers come to play. So the next run comes from an all-time great Hitman speedrunner named Yanini, who uh, represented Hitman at GDQ. He did a full trilogy run at Pro Difficulty at GDQ. He's an excellent runner. And this is one of the best runs. Um, this is like one of the leading runs for the majority of the competition. This is Yanini's, again, guard start 108. From this point on, almost every run I think I'm going to show you is from the guard start. It was sort of figured out by the elite runners that that guard start is the most perfectly positioned. So, Yanini's 108. Let's show you. Starts here. Instantly poisons. He has a different strat. He instantly poisons because he doesn't... He realizes he doesn't have to run down the stairs to get the shot. In fact, he runs this way. Staying on the roof. Oh, no sound? Wait. He has no sound? Let's make sure we get sound. Uh, go back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add gain. Sound is fine. I want to make sure you guys can hear it. I'll add a little bit of gain. Make sure you guys can hear this. There we go. All right. So he stays on the roof. He has decided he doesn't want to go downstairs and, and route it towards where he needs to be, which is the ground floor. He stays in the top floor balcony, just keeps running this way and shoots a, a pistol shot right here. Perfectly placed in the grass. Then he keeps running. Runs over here. Now, this was crazy to me. This is a crazy innovation that he was the first one I saw. I think he was actually the first one to do in terms of submissions. This guy, the top runners figured out, would walk under the bell. But he didn't want to wait for him to walk under the bell, which happens in like 50 seconds. He shoots perfectly placed shots to make this guy inside panic. He makes him scared and run under the bell. So while this guy's panicking, he snipes the bell again. So within the first 20 seconds now, he's got this guy, which is the hardest target that we put in, dead from a bell shot across the map. Snipes that other guy instantly, clean snipe. Pulls out a muffin. The, the trademark, you know it, you love it, muffin boosts on these potted plants and just jumps off the roof. <laughs> Perfect shots to distract everybody. Barely avoids the whoosh. He's in a guard outfit. He puts his gun away. Um, snipes that guy. Knowing he'll get out in time. Snipes that guy. And then a second muffin boost. This is the one I use. Uh, I use the Marvel record as well. Boost down here. <laughs> and now he's gone. Now he went on no stairs at all. He stayed on the rooftop, did three insane shots to kill three guys across the map, and then muffin boosted off the roof and then off the cliff to get to the top of the level to the bottom of the level in like 20 seconds. And then just really clean, efficient shots. Remember how efficient like the camera camera shot was? 
even more clean and efficient. He goes, he goes, bam, bam. Wait, one more time. This is, this is just beautiful shots. Bam, bam, bam. Everybody's looking away. Target's dead. Just really, really precise, really clean uh, isolating of this target. And he's out. I mean, God damn, a 108. A 108. And in my mind, for the majority of the time this contract was up, I thought Yanini was guaranteed winning. Because he submitted this only a few days in. It was really a five, six day contract. A few days in, and I thought this was the one. This run is not going to get beat. And again, they can't see each other's runs. So nobody knows how he did it. Nobody knows his run. I thought this guy figured it out. That's the cleanest run I've ever seen. I was blown away. I was wrong. That was not the winning run. The next run I'm about to show you <laughs> combines everything and more into something I think is disgusting. It also starts from the guard spawn. Let me show you Dominic 7597's run. Make sure the sound's okay. Sound, sound check. Too loud, too loud, too loud, too loud, too loud. This guy might be an actual hitman. Instantly starts, doesn't poison. Unlike Yanini, doesn't instantly poison. Distraction shot. Also figured out the panic bell. And just clean. A little a fade away. He's running away. He does a fade away pistol shot to knock down the bell. He is shooting a piece of string holding up the bell from uh, insanely far away. Quick scopes. Pops that guy. Then does the poison. It's so efficient down to the second. The poison would be too slow for what he was trying to do. Pops the poison. Insane AI trickery. Shoots the floor. Flips his gun out. Pulls out a muffin to make this guy... It, it, it's a gun flash thing. <laughs> Hard to explain. Either way, it's, an, it's a crazy AI trick with the way the gun was angled. Doesn't get seen. Managed to walk through without getting seen. Absolutely crazy. Almost full. Muffin off the roof. Instead of walking all the way up there and shooting that guy, makes him move to get a better angle so we can keep running this way. Everything's saving little seconds. Boom! Right here. Snipes him without ever, whatever, deviating from his route. His route is down to the fucking just perfect angle. He doesn't want to have to leave. So he makes them move into his route rather than moving his route to adjust to them. Second muffin boost. Swag moves there. <laughs> Actual swag moves. Slides down the cliff, dropping his gun and then catching it out of the air. That's not even... That doesn't help his time at all. That's just for fucking style points. I want to show that again. He drops his gun while sliding down the cliff and catches it out of the air. <laughs> Just to swag on him, Dominic. What the hell? Uh, wait. Yeah, I think I think I saw that correctly. I think he shoots. What the hell? What the hell? Wait, one more time. One more time. Yeah, he figured out this that nobody else I saw do. If you shoot this stalactite, it makes everyone who would see this body look away. So he shoots the stalactite, it drops, it makes everyone panic and look over here. What the hell? And then pops that guy. Which is just, which is an amazing find, you know? Because everyone else was like shooting the cameras or shooting around here. He saves time even more by shooting that stalactite, makes everyone look away, gets the kill. And he's out in 55, under a minute! Under a minute from Dominic! Uh, the first sub minute. Absolutely crazy. Every rough edge has been shaved off. And that actually is the human limit. We're, we're, that's it. 55 seconds is the human limit. But there is one runner left who I can't call a human. <laughs> 
There is one runner left. <laughs> Who doesn't look like a human to me? <laughs> doesn't add up to me. To shave off just one second from that guy's time. Dominic's 55 seconds. To shave off just a single second. Tupla Piconi. The winner of this run. The winner of the $500 contract. The man who I sent 420 euros to this morning. Tupla Piconi. To shave off a single second. Invented entirely new tech. Tech that has never been seen in any speed run before today. <laughs> Let me show you now the 54 second run by Tupla Piconi. It also starts from the guard spawn, but it <laughs> it is not the same <laughs> as what we saw from Dominic. Let me show you. Starts, immediately syringes again. Instant poison. Gun flash panics. I mean, that's just crazy right there. That's just fucking crazy tech. Panics this guy with the gun, like by pointing a gun at his face, but then instantly drops the gun <laughs> and picks it up out of the air. <laughs> ah, look at this. <laughs> so that there's no yellow bar. It doesn't... <laughs> Panics that guy? Please. This is going to be hard to explain. But what I can tell you is the way this is done has never been seen before by any speedrun. There are variants, but the way he does it here is completely new. He takes out a violin and runs into the attic. Again, every target he wants to kill is below him. Everyone is down. Every other runner we saw today that started here tried to get down as quickly as possible. Why is he going up? Why is he going into the attic with a violin? He takes the violin. He throws it on the floor. He grabs this toy tank. An item that I've fucking never seen. I've never even seen this item. I don't use it at all. I've played this map a thousand times. I've never seen this toy tank. Grabs the toy tank. Stands on top of the broken violin. And... <laughs> Shoots a propane tank that happens to be sitting exactly the right distance away. <laughs> the propane tank explosion causes the pieces of the violin that he's standing on to shove him up through the roof. What the fuck? Never seen before. Very rarely has that as a violin boost been done with a controlled bomb detonation where you plant the bomb exactly where you need it to be, stand on it. He he found a propane tank in the wild, didn't move it, placed his violin perfectly around it, shot the propane tank, and exploded to the roof. Actually opening a new dimension. Now he's at the highest point of the map. He's, he's like extremely high up. He's on top of the roof. He's as far from his targets as possible. Using this height, he has a perfect vantage point of every angle of the map. <laughs> Boom. Church bell kill. First guy kill. Third guy kill. <laughs> Uses the toy tank. He did not have enough item slots to fit muffins because he needed the violin to get the roof. He didn't have enough item slots to use muffin boosts. So he found out that you can use the toy tank, which breaks, to make it over this wall. <laughs> wall running! <laughs> Using the wall run. Oh, 
All of that to save a single second. A single second. 54 seconds. <laughs> and win the competition. An absolutely insane, game-breaking, legendary time. And though... And though Tupla is our winner, that was not the fastest time. <laughs> that was not the fastest time. <laughs> because even though this motherfucker already had the best time in the world, a full second faster than his competition, he submitted one more run. <laughs> he went again to break his own record with this. Fifty seconds. I, I want to pause here and just uh, explain the awe that I'm feeling as someone that loves this game. 50 seconds is 10 seconds per kill. It's a five target mission. They are on opposite sides of the map. They are in different rooms on different levels. Five targets across the map and you have to escape. You have to, you have to kill all five without being seen, without being found, and get out. And he has 10 seconds per kill. 50 seconds is ludicrous. I want to show you beginning this right here. Starts, gun flashes, tosses the muffin, <laughs> tosses another muffin. <laughs> So instead of going all the way to the attic to boost with a violin, he decided to save time by standing on pieces of a crumbling muffin that he blows up with a bomb in full view of everybody that he has panicked perfectly. He uses a gun flash and a muffin to make this guy not look so that he can stand on pieces of a crumbling blueberry muffin that he launches through the roof to get to the roof. I'm I'm blown away. I'm blown away. <laughs> These are crazy pistol shots, by the way. They're so far away. Pops that guy through the bushes. Pops that guy. His third muffin. You start with three muffins. Use all three muffins perfectly. Boosts off of here. <laughs> Wall runs perfectly. Perfectly shot while moving. Pops him. 50 seconds, dude. Hey, just a Drake for a moment. Just a Drake for what is a... Just a crazy... One of the craziest runs I've ever seen in my life. I've watched tons of Hitman. I've played tons of Hitman. Okay, I've grinded tons of Hitman. I have done things in runs that I consider impressive. I've done nothing like this. This is, this is truly a deep understanding of the wildest Hitman mechanics. Ins inhuman. To do five targets across the map in 50 seconds is it blows my mind. So I was very happy to send him the money today. Uh, and he seemed very excited to get it. So uh, definitely the work was put in. All of this was discovered in less than a week. I put this contract up completely blind. Nobody had advanced knowledge or notice. He could not watch anyone else's runs to learn. This was self-discovered in one week. 50 seconds. Truly crazy. But I want to thank all of the runners. I only showed 10 today. There was dozens and dozens. People did a lot of crazy uh, variety of strategies, variety of starts. Um, just, uh, phenomenal. Just just phenomenal, phenomenal uh, uh, submissions. Everyone that got involved was crazy. I think I will be doing this again. It was a ton of fun for me to watch and see the new runs, and the new times coming over the week, and people get better and better and better and evolve and evolve. And uh, Tupla, well-deserved first place. Now, I also said that I would give a bonus prize, $50, to the most creative run. 
because not everyone that submits is going to be able to do this. You know what? I wanted everyone to feel like they could submit and not everyone that submits is going to be able to do a exploding muffin boost to the moon to snipe four targets with a pistol from across the map. Not everyone can do that. So I wanted to give a creative one. Now, this was tough for me because a lot of these were super creative. I really liked Atomic Garbage's run. I liked... Tuples is honestly the most creative, to be honest, but he already won the main prize. Um, Hatches with no boosts at all was very creative. But I thought it would be fun to celebrate somebody who didn't go for a pure speedrun route. So we got a submission <laughs> from a guy. <laughs> who went a different direction. I attempted Atriox Hitman 3. <laughs> He decided to not go for speed at all, but instead for spaghetti. Let's show champion RJ's run. I attempted Atriox Hitman 3 contract where I needed to kill these five targets silently, but... This was going to be too easy for me, so I added my own rules. I could only be dressed as Santa for the entire run, and more difficultly, I could only use and pick up tins of expired spaghetti. Here's how I did it. I started in the ICA safe house, where I dropped the things I brought and made my way to the kitchen to get the five cans of expired spaghetti I needed. Then I made the bike guy get up and head towards the cliff where I hit him over the head with the spaghetti to kill him off the cliff. <laughs> then knocked out some bystanders to stop them from seeing him. I then headed to the church and used more spaghetti to distract the target at the right time. And then knocked him out with spaghetti and dropped him down some cliffs to kill him and hide him. <laughs> I then went into the mansion using the fountain and went through some rooms using one of my cans of spaghetti to distract <laughs> some of the people. Then, once upstairs, I knocked out a guard and destroyed the cameras, which is important for the last target. I then stalked my target, finally distracting them and launching them off the balcony, making it seem like an accident kill. <laughs> I then did a similar thing with my next target where I threw spaghetti, moving them to the cliff and used spaghetti to get them off the cliff. <laughs> then I faced the final challenge, getting past this bridge. To do so, I needed to drag not this guy or this guy, but this guy by staring at him at the right time. I then would sneak past the two guards with their backs turned and the past the last one almost being seen to get into the ruins. <laughs> Once in the ruins, I then made my way down into the cave and used some spaghetti to get my target <laughs> towards an acid vat, knocking him out with the spaghetti and dumping him in the acid. <laughs> then I headed to the plane and got Silent Assassin. 2256, <laughs> but in the spirit of Hitman, spaghetti percent. So, um, that is the winner of my creativity prize. Champion RJ, you win $50. Please reach out and I will give you $50. Uh, but congratulations to everyone that submitted all the different varieties of runs. If I didn't show it, I'm sorry. I would love to show all of them, but it would be a thousand year YouTube video. So, um, uh, thanks everybody submitted. This was really fun for me. I really enjoyed this content. Uh, I, I was just so blown away. I was really, really impressed. I thought it would be cool, but it was way cooler than I even imagined. And, uh, unfortunately... I now have a date night <laughs> where I'm going to spend the entire time talking to Ari over dinner about the spaghetti kills. <laughs> Babe, you don't understand. He used a muffin to get on the roof and, and, and then this guy used spaghetti. <laughs> but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, thank you for watching short stream today, but it was a really cool one for me. Shout outs to Coates. A uh, huge shout out to Coates for helping design the contract, uh, organize the contract. Um, invite top speedrunners to be a part of it. He was he was extremely invaluable. And I I look forward to working with him again for future ones of these. Uh, Coates, uh, just, a, just a great guy. Just extremely welcoming to the Hitman community and helpful. Um, and thank shouts to everybody that, that, that participated. Uh, have a great night. Much love, everybody. Have a, have, a, have a wonderful weekend. I will see you tomorrow. I'm actually going to do a stream with Ludwig tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific. I will be late for sure. But 11 a.m. Pacific is our start time. Me and Ludwig will be doing maybe some monkey ball. 
<laughs> we'll see. So, uh, so please tune in if you're interested. Good night. Peace. Is there a Hitman Runner that I could, uh, could I could raid? Let's raid a Hitman Runner. Let's keep the community love going. Uh, let's see what we got here. Who's playing Hitman? Categories. Hitman three. Oh, uh, is Moo playing? Bro, I'd love, love to show the goat, dude. Would love that. Hitman 3. Moo Day? He is playing. <gasps> oh, all right, we're going to raid Moo Day. M-O-O-D-E-H-H. -H. This guy's probably, in my mind, the goat of Hitman. He is the person I have studied the most. Um, I, I think he's the goat. I think if I had to pick one person to be the goat, it would be him. And so I will rate him. Please check him out. He has, um, he's working on some crazy stuff. Have a great night and, uh, see you when I see him. Peace.